On this all-new episode of Nightlife, we buckle in and relive some big-time wins as the Golden Knights make a push towards the playoffs. Carlton, to Dorofiev, top score! Pavel Dorofiev buries it! How about this shot? Wow. And we hit the ice with Bruce Cassidy to talk about puck movement. Manage the puck better there, make better decisions. Well, you know, and sometimes it'd be, well, you know, I saw a guy open her. What do you want me to do? I'm like, I want you to make a better decision. That's what we just said. Plus, we head into the Valley as the VGK continue to grow the game locally. To grow the game, you need the teachers involved to get it into the schools and, and, and get more sticks in kids' hands. So I think it, uh, it went great. And they said they enjoyed themselves. So hopefully they take it to their gym classes and their kids at schools. All of that and more this week on Nightlife. He has that scoring ability. And Dorofiev scores! First of the year! Just like that. Pavel Dorofiev on the pass from Carlson. Score! Just threw the stick and a good job Dorofiev staying with it. Stevenson. He's it across! Score! Pavel Dorofiev on the redirect! With Pavel Dorofiev. Dorofiev looking. He shot and he scores! Pavel Dorofiev. Oh, what a shot by Dorofiev. Head up, picks his spot, and rips it home. This is off his stick in a hurry. It just rips it home. Back door, Dorofiev. Stick can't on. Trying to tuck it in, and he scores. What a finish. All of the hands by Dorofiev. But there's the move in now. And he sticks with it. Mantha keeps it alive. Dorofiev down low. Cuts in front and scores. Goals in three straight for the first time in his career for Pavel Dorofiev. Welcome into this all-new episode of Nightlife. The Golden Knights certainly have offensive firepower throughout the lineup. One of the youngest faces in the lineup, however, is providing some serious scoring depth. Pavel Dorofiev has established himself on the third line and has been on an absolute tear over the last month. One of the major keys to any offense is finding scoring in the bottom six, and the VGK have certainly unlocked it. Pavel and the Golden Knights would look to continue their playoff push in a massive matchup with the Winnipeg Jets north of the border. Stop three of this four-game roadie. We're getting set here for a tough matchup against the Winnipeg Jets. Underway tonight. Pavel Dorfeev now to Weichel, to the net. Shane Hellebuck. And he stopped the rebound on Marshall Stone. Eddie took a big hit on the corner. Now we're going to bounce. Polisar dropping the gloves with Stanley. Logan Stanley, a big man at 6'7. Stanley up on the right. Knocks Polisar's helmet off. That long reach. Polisar, this is an answer back for the hit on Amadio. And look at Pavel Dorfeev. Six goals in his last 11 games. And Dorfeev looking. His shot. And Hellebuck may get a piece of that with a stick. Carlson to Dorofiev, shot, score! Pavel Dorofiev buries it! Now this line comes through again. Dorofiev had a great chance earlier. That little move to change his shooting position and went wide. Here's the first chance. See that little hesitation, but puck recovery. Carlson gets it back. Manta does a good job going to the front. And a quick little pass right to the high slot. And how about this shot? Wow. Logan Stanley provides the screen in front of his old goaltender, and Dorofiev goes upstairs for his 12th as a Golden Knight. Grab the 1-0 lead. Just wanted to update you guys on his nickname in the locker room. Heard people calling him Scorofiev today, so hoping that that one sticks with the <laughs> fan base as well. There's something there. Very smart player, great hands, great shot. Up now to seven goals in his last 12 games. He's always in the right place. Uh, he's always open, so I think that's a, an underrated skill that he has. He almost scored on the first one there, Pav, and then uh, just retrieving the puck after, and he was in good spots. So I just had to give it to him, and he doesn't miss from there. He has a lethal shot. We've all seen that. Carlson to the Jets line. Pulls up. Here's Hannafin walking in. He's centered it. And Dorfeev trying to find some room, put it down low, and tipped on that by Mantha. They got Mantha and Stanley with gloves in each other's face. Standing his ground, two big guys. 
towards Dorothea, he kind of waits, waits. Good job taking the shot lane by Sandberg. Just gets it to that mouth, and then him and Stanley exchange shots. Carlson around the boards, and Eichel able to play it through Connor. Eichel up by shorthanded. Watched by Morrissey. That's drive in a little further. Slams the brakes on, looking for a little bit of help. Shovel it in front, finds Wah, and a save made Hellebuck. Great work by Jack Eichel to make something out of nothing and set up Wah shorthanded. And four Jets players around have got the puck. Get Wah wide open in front of the net. And, and Jack's been uh, making a lot of great plays there. Uh, nice pass to me, and like I said, we're more aggressive, so I think that's the key. Ben Hutton with some time and space. Here's Zach Whitecloud up ahead. Mantha looking, trying to feed it to him to that score! Ivan Barbershev on the backhand! And the Golden Knights take the lead with five and a half minutes left. What a backhand from Barbershev. It's a great play by Whitecloud. Everybody thinks rim. No, a little pass to Mantha and then a great pass. Mantha just putting it into an open area. And Barbershev, look at this backhand. He just rips it. Kind of a backhand, one-time chip shot right to the top corner. Wow. He got all of that one as he beats Hellebuck over the right shoulder. And the Golden Knights grab the 2-1 lead. Extra attacker for Winnipeg. Down one with just under two minutes to go. The extra player is Connor. He centers it across. And a save tops off Appleton. Barbershev with a steal at center with an open net. Gets around Morrissey and scores. Well, starts with a huge save by Logan Thompson. Able to move across. There's the stop as Barbashev has his 18. Hannafin moves it. Carlson couldn't handle it along the wall, but provides the heat on Monaghan. Buck loose to Eichel for the empty netter, and he's got it. That's the 25th of the season for Jack Eichel. A big two points here in Winnipeg. Gold Knights with a couple of empty netters to seal this victory in Winnipeg. They sweep the season series with the Jets for the second year in a row. Another terrific performance by Logan Thompson. And the Golden Knights continue their dominance of the Winnipeg Jets. Time for our first break here on Nightlife. Coming up next, we hit the ice at City National Arena with head coach Bruce Cassidy. I'll tell you, for us in D-Zone, everywhere on the ice, we're trying to protect the middle of the ice, so we always want numbers there. It's the most dangerous. I think you score the most goals from there. Because uh, you're closer to the net and your angle's better. Keep it locked. Nightlife on Scripps Sports will be right back. Welcome back to Nightlife. With a playoff push in full effect, the Golden Knights need to go into every game with laser focus. The attention to detail is a huge part of head coach Bruce Cassidy's system, and we hit the ice with him to discuss the importance of taking care of the puck. Do you do a lot of in-game talk about puck management, or is it mostly between periods? Uh, with your players? No, no, a lot in-game. Yeah, I mean it's addressed before the game. I mean I've probably said it every second game. The ice is available in front of us or behind us. Let's make good decisions. You know, their uh, players get tired of hearing of it, but it's it's a real important part of the game. In-game, most of the time when a coach is on a player, whoever it is, manage the puck better there, make better decisions. Well, you know, and sometimes it'd be, well, you know, I saw a guy open her. What do you want me to do? I'm like, I want you to make a better decision. That's what we just said. So I'm coming up the ice here. And you're right in my face, right? So let's say I have a player coming with me. Jack Eichel's right there, but I can't make the pass to him there because your stick's in the way. But I, but I can bank it off there because what's open there, that's ice behind you. Okay. Is available. So he can skate onto that puck. Ice in front of you. If I have it here, I can make that pass to Jack all day long because your stick's not in the way. In today's game, I think there's more, there's not as many big, strong, physical defensemen maybe as there was in the 80s. You know, those big six foot Definitely. four guys that yeah. weren't maybe good puck movers, but were big guys. So why not, okay, so Kale McCarr is an offensive guy, Taze, right? They're not huge. They're good players and great, and great defenders. Why not try to take them on with the size advantage? Whoever it is, Grizzlich for Boston take them on and attack them. So that's probably more the conversation. Sometimes you can pass your way into the slot. Sometimes you can bully your way into the slot or, or you know, skill your way into there. So mix it up. 
you know, get yourself in there sometimes. What's your personnel look like? How's their foot speed? How are their reads coming back? Hockey IQ, so you gotta coach what your team does as well. You know, and that's where you try guys one-on-one. -on -one. If I'm attacking you, Darren, low, if I beat you, I mean, I'm in good ice right now, right? Good shot. Someone's got a, someone's got a cover for you, but you know, you're in dangerous area all of a sudden. So if you beat a guy one-on-one, -on -one, like inside the dots, okay, you, you're creating chaos for the defenders that are left in front, because they're like, I can't let them shoot from there. And they rush out of coverage and I throw it back door. Petro's goal at Stoney, right? I know it's a two-on-one, -on -one, but that D sooner or later sees a guy getting closer and closer to the net. He's like, do I, do I block a shot? Do I slide? And all of a sudden, bang, it's back door tapping. And the goal is the same thing. He might overplay his angle. I mean, you wouldn't, you'd play it perfectly, but some other guys might come out a little too far and that leaves a, you know, an east-west play, so to speak, into a wide open net. <clears throat> when you do get some separation and I'm here and I make a hope play into, into the slot there when he's really not open. Cause now I'm here, I got a guy in front battling and I got maybe a guy in the slot. So all three of us are on the wrong side of the puck now and we've got a back check. You see that net way down there? That's like 192 feet. And if you're tired to get all the way back there, you know, because you made a kind of a hope play here too. That's why you'll see a lot of guys cycle it behind the net over and over. And you're like, well, why can't they shoot at the net from here? Because they want to try to break the other team down eventually and make a better percentage play than just throwing it there. So those are, that's why you see in the game sometimes why aren't they getting inside? And when I say inside, meaning into the slot and into the net. Well, the other team's doing a good job. They're checking well. I'll tell you, for us in D zone, everywhere on the ice, we're trying to protect the middle of the ice. So we always want numbers there because it's the most dangerous. I think you score the most goals from there because uh, you're closer to the net and your angle's better. But, you know, so the middle of the ice is good, but how do you get people out of the middle of the ice is probably why, you, I was telling you earlier, why we want to drive the puck deep outside get people you know, sucked to the outside. Now you put it back in when you have the number. Boards to middle, we'll call it, all over the ice. And I think that a lot of teams that have good team speed through the middle, you see it with McKinnon all the time. Puck goes up the boards, you know, and, and we've got to be very careful we don't get drawn over to, and all of a sudden it comes into the middle to McKinnon, McDavid, Eichels of the world, and they are gone. So that's what you're trying to do a little bit in the ozone, whether you do it outside the dots or behind the goal line. I think a lot of teams use behind the goal line because now everyone's back is turned to the dangerous part of the middle. You're a goaltender and a very good one. I've seen it out here many, many times. I wouldn't call you great or excellent, but very good. And good guy in the room. Good guy in the room. Great, great sort of uh, ability to stand in there and take the, take the shots, um, build people's confidence. Yeah. Um, but even the D, their toe caps get facing the back of the net, they can't see what's going on behind them. So you see a lot of teams try to use that area. Obviously Gretzky made that famous a long time ago and it's still a good area to use. In fact, the league expanded the, the room behind the net to create offense for that reason. So, because then the puck comes to the slot in a hurry and the goal is still reacting to the, from the back of the net and the players. So it's, it's, it's a good opportunity to create offense. So that's another area that you want to use that area to get pucks to the middle. Um, and now you see a lot of low to highs where the defensemen are shooting for tips in the middle of the ice. That's another high slot, bumper, whatever word. So there's a lot of different ways you want to get in there. So yes, you want to get in there, but you, you know, it's not that easy to get in there when people are there. Yes, you have some good one-on-one -on -one players that can beat a guy and get in there, but in general, you usually have to draw people out of there before you can get in there. And that's, you know, offensive tactics. Time for another break here on Nightlife. Coming up next, we head to Minnesota with another huge two points on the line. Jonathan Marcheseau, what a way to get his 40th goal. Vegas is going to get the two points, and Minnesota will lose the loser point as well. Don't go anywhere. Nightlife on Scripps Sports will be right back. Welcome back to Nightlife. With five of the six possible points already acquired in the first three away from T-Mobile, the Golden Knights would look to finish the road trip strong in a crucial matchup against the Minnesota Wild. And we are underway. Afternoon game, Easter holiday weekend. And Minnesota will try to change some players, but they get the turnover, the rocket shot right on. Cross ice, that shot right on. Thompson makes the save. Lance is one off the boards nicely. Cutting in is Hoffman. The shot, there's contact on Logan Thompson. Both players 
down to the heat. Here's Marcus Johansson trying to pull away. And at the end, McNabb got a stick and altered the shot. Could have been a great scoring chance for the Wild. Johansson trying to feather it through. In front, backhand hits the post. Stevenson in front. Carlson bangs at it. Loose puck. Save Gustafson. Scramble for it. And Gustafson makes another save there. Off the faceoff. Hits the iron. Gustafson never even moved. It was behind him. Moldy. But Kaprizov, he's in. That shot, they score! Moldy to Kaprizov, a power play goal. And the wild strike first, one nothing Minnesota. Center, Barbashev, oh, great stop there. Gustafson, the blocker save on Barbashev. Way from Cotter. Head man pass with some speed. Here's Stevenson, makes the pass, shot, the score! Chandler Stevenson sets up Michael Amadio with 6-7 team to go in regulation. And we're tied at one. Here's Zuccarello, they're onside. Zuccarello got it, the cross pass, shot stop. Chaos in the crease. And that'll do it. So the goalie's in for now, we'll keep an eye. We'll start three on three. The Minnesota Wild going for it here. Kaprizov, Zuccarello, shot stopped. Carlson, Vegas gets to it. The empty net, it goes. Jonathan Marcheseau, what a way to get his 40th goal. Vegas is going to get the two points, and Minnesota will lose the loser point as well. Time for one final break here on Nightlife. Coming up next... We head back home to the Valley, where the Golden Knights continue their efforts of growing the game of hockey. Don't touch that remote. Nightlife will be right back. Welcome back to Nightlife. The city of Las Vegas is becoming quite the epicenter for the game of hockey. This week, both City National Arena and America First Center played host to the 2024 USA Hockey Chipotle Youth Tier 1 16U and 18U National Championships. 16 teams from each age group, representing 17 states, arrived for the five-day tournament. Among those in attendance included college coaches and NHL scouts for one of the biggest youth hockey tournaments of the year. It's no surprise that events like these are now taking place in Las Vegas, as the Golden Knights have taken the hockey world by storm. A large part of that is the team's constant effort to grow the game. Earlier this season, the Golden Knights hosted a clinic for educators in the Valley to pass along skills and drills to add to their curriculum. is a CCSD Professional Development Day. Uh, we have 150 teachers that we're teaching um, drills, some shooting, some stick handling, um, some passing with our Knights Guard, and just giving them some takeaways that they can implement into their curriculum. Okay, so you want to teach your kids good hockey position? Is one of your stick out in front of you? Legs shoulder width apart, knees bent, head up, chest up, stick in front. A lot of our high school teachers, this is their first introduction to the Golden Knights and to hockey itself. And so it's really good that they're coming in here, they're learning some drills and some other ways that they can start implementing that hockey into the classroom. Yeah, we have some teachers that are very good, some that played junior hockey, some that played hockey and teach hockey, and some that are just learning. I am a soccer player, lower body only activities. So hand and eye coordination is very new to me. Top hand, the stick should be kind of in the pocket of your hand. Like that, sits like that. So we're able to, uh, you know, correct the way that they hold their stick and, and giving them good takeaways that they can take into their classrooms and help make their program stronger. The other hand is underneath. Okay, so one's over top, one is underneath, about shoulder width apart. Okay. And to grow the game, you need the teachers involved to get it into the schools and, and, and get more sticks in kids' hands. And so that relationship right here of, of the Golden Knights coming in, supplying sticks, supplying goals, flying balls, a lot of different equipment right there really allowed us to expand that program throughout our elementaries and our middle schools. 
So with 150 teachers, obviously we're going to be getting through to thousands of kids. So all these teachers teach hockey in their curriculum right now. I've learned a ton. Um, actually, our unit going on next week is hockey. Like This has actually provided me a little bit of confidence taking it back to my students so I don't look like as rookie as I actually am. Yeah. On your sticks, you have two sides. You have a forehand, which is the curved part of your stick right here. This is your forehand. This side is your backhand. When we do skills, we'll do some that are forehand only, some that are backhand only. I think it's really good. You know, a lot of our students aren't familiar with hockey as much, and they've, over the last few years, they've been doing a lot of stuff with the Golden Knights, and so they've become more and more familiar with it. But as we really work to expand the program throughout, the skills that the teachers are learning here really kind of help enhance that education. Ball control, like keeping two hands on the stick when you're turning and stuff. Um, I didn't know that. I usually always took one hand off, so it was good, so I can bring that back in the classroom. I learned a lot of how to deal with big class sizes, because as we know, we have 60 plus students in a class. So this was great for us to how to accommodate everybody. I actually like the drill that we were doing where a couple people didn't have the ball and you pass because I've played that before but you have to steal it. So it created more of like a team bonding almost and cooperation versus more of a competitive side. So I actually like that. It was something new that I learned. The thought behind this is that they can mimic the exact uh, program and practice plan that we're doing here today so that hopefully that if they're not already doing some of these drills that they can learn some new drills today from the Knights. Well, I think ultimately you can have everyone active. We don't like people sitting out. We actually don't allow it. We want everyone to be moving because sometimes the hour and 20 minutes they spend with us is the only movement they get all day. So this is a great activity on how we can make sure everyone's included and moving um, for the duration of the period. So that's what I got from this activity. It went great and they enjoyed themselves, so hopefully they take it to their gym classes and their kids at schools. That does it for this episode of Nightlife. Make sure to tune in next week for an exclusive interview with Shea Theodore as the Golden Knights continue their push toward defending Lord Stanley. Until next time, Golden Knights fans, we bid you adieu.